SCP-035 is to be contained within a steel, iron, and lead-shielded room at all times. Doors are to be triple locked at all times, with the exception of allowing personnel in or out. No fewer than two armed guards are to be posted at any time. Guards must remain outside at all times, and are not allowed within the containment room under any circumstances. SCP-035 appears to be a white porcelain tragedy mask. A highly corrosive and degenerative viscous liquid constantly seeps from its eye and mouth holes, and anything coming into contact with this substance slowly decays over a period of time until it has decayed completely into a pool of the original contaminant. The origin of the liquid is unknown. Conversations with SCP-035 have proven to be informative. Researchers have learned details about other SCP objects in history in general, as SCP-035 claims to have been at many momentous events. SCP-035 displays a highly intelligent and charismatic personality, being both amiable and flattering to all those who speak with it. It comes across as highly intelligent and appears to have a photographic memory. However, psychological analysis has revealed SCP-035 to possess a highly manipulative nature, capable of forcing sudden and profound changes to an interviewer's psychological state. SCP-035 has proven to be highly sadistic, and can transform individuals into near-mindless servants with linguistic persuasion alone. SCP-035 has stated that it has intimate knowledge of the workings of the human mind, and implied that it could change anyone's views if given enough time. SCP-035 appears to be a white porcelain comedy mask, although at times, it will change to tragedy. In these events, all existing visual records, such as photographs and video footage, automatically change to reflect its new appearance. Subjects within 1.5 to 2 meters of SCP-035, or in visual contact with it, experience a strong urge to put it on. When SCP-035 is placed on the face of an individual, an alternate brainwave pattern from SCP-035 overlaps that of the original host, effectively snuffing it out and causing brain death to the subject. The bodies of possessed subjects decay at a highly accelerated rate, eventually becoming little more than mummified corpses. Nevertheless, SCP-035 has demonstrated the ability to remain in cognitive control of a body experiencing severe structural damage. Even if the subject's body literally decays to the point where motion is not mechanically possible. SCP-035 is to be kept within a hermetically sealed glass case, no fewer than 10 centimeters thick. A trained psychologist is to remain on site at all times, and research personnel are not to touch SCP-035 at any time.
Item number, SCP-173. Object class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. Item SCP-173 is to be kept in a locked container at all times. When personnel must enter SCP-173's container, no fewer than three may enter at any time. And the door is to be relocked behind them. At all times, two persons must maintain direct eye contact with SCP-173 until all personnel have vacated and relocked the container. Moved to Site-19 in 1993. The origin of the object, as of yet, unknown. SCP-173 is constructed from concrete and rebar, with traces of Krylon brand spray paint. The reddish-brown substance on the floor is a combination of feces and blood. Origin of these materials is unknown. The enclosure must be cleaned on a bi-weekly basis. Personnel assigned to enter the container are instructed to alert one another before blinking. Line of sight must not be broken at any time with SCP-173. The object cannot move while within a direct line of sight. Because SCP-173 is animate and extremely hostile. Object is reported to attack by snapping the neck at the base of the skull. Or by strangulation. In the event of an attack, personnel are to observe Class 4 Hazardous Object Containment Procedures. Personnel report sounds of scraping stone originating from within the container when no one is present inside. This is considered normal, and any change in this behavior should be reported to the acting HMCL supervisor on duty. Item number, SCP-173, Object Class, Euclid, End of File. of SCP-1048 are currently unknown, though it is still believed to be somewhere in Site-24. Subject is to be secured for containment, but any creation of SCP-1048s should be destroyed on site, unless further evidence warrants less extreme actions. No teddy bears are to be allowed in Site-24 to prevent any confusion or mistaken identity. 
Any object that resembles a teddy bear is to be reported to the security team immediately. This is not a joke. We have no idea what SCP-1048's full capabilities are. Who knows how many of the damn things are out there by now. Quote by Dr. Carve. SCP-1048 is a small teddy bear, approximately 33 centimeters in height. Through testing, composition of the subject revealed no unusual qualities that make it discernible from a non-sapient teddy bear. Subject is capable of moving of its own accord and can communicate through a small range of gestures. The subject regularly shows affection to individuals in ways found endearing by most people. Affection is usually given in the form of a hug to the lower leg, but subject has also been observed dancing, jumping in place, and in two separate events it has even drawn childlike pictures for janitorial staff. All Foundation personnel that have interacted with the subject have responded positively to its affection, even D-Class with normally sociopathic tendencies. Attempts at direct communication with SCP-1048 have not been considered successful. Though it is capable of simple gestures to indicate a yes or no answer, it will often not react to lines of questioning concerning its nature and where it originated from. It is not known if this is because SCP-1048 simply does not know the answers or because it does not want to answer. Though capable of drawing pictures, it has not used its art as a form of communication beyond showing affection, even when encouraged to do so. The more anomalous behavior of SCP-1048 was not observed until approximately seven months after it was originally secured. It is hypothesized that the subject is able to construct crude replicas of itself using various materials by a process that has yet to be observed directly by Foundation staff. Dr. Carver has suggested that SCP-1048 uses its endearing qualities to lull those around it into a false sense of security, allowing it to collect materials to produce these creations. Currently, there are three known creations of SCP-1048, designated SCP-1048-A, SCP-1048-B, and SCP-1048-C. The nature of these creations has been in stark contrast to SCP-1048's general behavior, as all have exhibited extreme violence towards humans. It's a warm late summer evening. Three girls are out for a night on the town. Everything seems normal, and the girls are hoping to have a fun time. But little do they know that someone or something is lurking in the shadows, watching, waiting. SCP-049 is a humanoid, roughly 1.9 meters in height, which bears the appearance 
of a plague doctor. While SCP-049 appears to be wearing the thick robes and mask indicative of that profession, the garments instead seem to have grown out of SCP-049's body over time, and are now nearly indistinguishable from whatever form is beneath them. SCP-049 will become hostile with individuals it sees as being affected by the pestilence, often having to be restrained should it encounter such. If left unchecked, SCP-049 will generally attempt to kill any such individual. SCP-049 is capable of causing all biological functions of an organism to cease through direct skin contact. SCP-049 has expressed frustration after these killings, indicating that they have done little to kill the pestilence. Though it will usually seek to then perform a crude surgery on the corpse, using the implements contained within a black doctor's bag it carries at all times. While these surgeries are not always successful, they often result in the creation of instances of SCP-049-2. SCP-049-2 instances are reanimated corpses that have been operated on by SCP-049. These instances do not seem to retain any of their prior memories or mental functions, and they can become extremely aggressive if provoked or if directed to by SCP-049. Despite these alterations, SCP-049 often remarks that the subjects have been cured. SCP-049 has spent a considerable amount of time studying and performing surgery on various mammalian corpses. SCP-049 will routinely spend several days performing surgery and then spent several more days documenting its findings in a thick leather journal stored within its doctor's bag. SCP-049 will often seek to share its findings. SCP-049 was discovered during the investigation of a series of unknown disappearances. During a raid on a local home, Investigators found several instances of SCP-049-2, as well as SCP-049. While law enforcement personnel engaged the hostile 049-2 instances, SCP-049 was noted as watching the engagement and taking notes in its journal. After all of the 049-2 instances were dispatched, SCP-049 willingly entered Foundation custody. SCP-049 is contained within a standard secure humanoid containment cell in Research Sector 02 at Site-19. The following is from the 049 Incident Report. Quote, Living human subjects are the only way to proceed forward, I have decided. I have gleaned all I can from corpses. My desires turn towards tending to those still living who suffer from the disease. You've just woken up in the middle of a cornfield. You have no idea how you got here. What's that? You notice something rustling in the corn behind you. Run! It's right behind you. Don't look back. Just keep going. You've made it. 
You've just reached safety. Or did you? Special containment procedures. All instances of SCP-1498 are to be held in standard containment chambers, located within Site 77. One technician is to be on hand to answer any calls placed to SCP-1498. Transcripts of all calls must be placed in Site 77's non-anomalous records archive. Any persons found to have interacted with SCP-1498 are to be quarantined for two months or until they show any signs of SCP-1498. Subjects showing signs of exposure are to be contained as an instance of SCP-1498-1, which require the same accommodation as instances of SCP-1498. SCP-1498 is a collection of 30 autonomous bundles of phone cords and handsets, assembled in such a way that they resemble sheep. Instances of SCP-1498 are fully ambulatory and will wander their containment chambers aimlessly. The words make your own custom dreamscapes with your friends at the Oniri Collective are printed on each instance. If a sapient organism attempts to use one of the phone handsets present on SCP-1498, they will hear three rings, followed by a voice identifying themselves as an operator for the Owen Neary Collective. This voice will instruct the subject on various options they have for dreaming and make suggestions for enhanced dreaming experiences. Following the completion of this call, the subject will lose consciousness for nine hours. When the subject regains consciousness, they will claim to have experienced the dream they ordered to any exact specifications they may have made. Subjects may express a desire to continue using SCP-1498's effect, or attempt to reuse it immediately. As subjects are repeatedly exposed to SCP-1498, they may begin to experience changes to their bodily and mental state. Subjects affected by SCP-1498 will express a desire to sleep as frequently as possible, preferring the use of SCP-1498 if they are able to. While asleep, portions of the subject's cranium and skull will be replaced with portions of telephones similar to those found on SCP-1498. This has manifested in a variety of ways, including subjects coughing up telephones, with cords extending into their esophagus, telephone wires beginning to grow in place of hair, ringing devices found on rotary telephones within the subject's ears, which may begin ringing continuously, vocalizations being replaced with dial tones. SCP-1498 was recovered on 9-18-1965 from an abandoned office complex in Miami, Florida, USA. After reports of bizarre livestock reached local Foundation assets,
When Foundation agents entered the building, they discovered the SCP-1498 instances. One bedroll. Approximately half a ton of rotary telephone components. And two pints of Type AB blood in a glass jar. In addition, one pajama onesie, well worn, was discovered folded at the bedroll. Testing has shown several months' worth of sweat and body oil soaked into the fabric. Eventually, a rotary phone will assemble itself on the subject's head, out of all the components that have been grown within and on their bodies. As of 11-14-1965, SCP-1498 has been classified as Euclid. End of file.